and uh, what a massive game here today. I thought it was going to be the Ulster shock of the year, just like last year's Cavan game. My God, it was 16-15 to Donegal in the end. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people were saying we hadn't had a shock in the Ulster Championship, and there's always usually one, and this was it. And look, I think everybody's going away. All the neutrals are going away. Certainly just delighted that we had a really, really competitive game. Like, it was really in it right to the end. And I suppose we were both chatting in this time. We were thinking it was going to extra time. It looked like it was doing that. And then Paddy McBrady, in fairness, the tie was a brilliant tie. And it got a point to win it. That that was deservedly of, of the highest quality. Like, McBrady, who had been so quiet in the game up to mm-hmm. that, to swing that point at the end was, was done on football. Oh, just unbelievable. A really pressurised kick, wasn't it? And so, say in the first half, the first 20 minutes, it was mostly Derry that dominated. Absolutely, Derry. And in fairness, probably the first 15 minutes of the second half, they really dominated as well. They created goal chances. They probably should have had a penalty call in the first half. Had a goal line clearance. I'd love to see a replay of it to see was it anywhere close to the line or maybe even over it in the second half and another half chance after that. So, Derry created better goal chances. Derry got through the Donegal defence much, much better. Their shots were from a better quality shooting position. Now, they had a day at the office where they rarely missed at all they had one of them days at the office mm-hmm. Donegal on the other hand really really struggled like we've seen Derry had what 15 players inside probably 35 yards at some stage not even 45 yards it was even deeper than that so it was exceptionally difficult for Donegal to break them down and Donegal struggled with that but then Nell O'Donnell really hit a purple patch Michael Lang getting some stunning points as well and them two players really stood up because McBrady was marked out of it mm-hmm. Murphy was obviously quiet although had a big say when he did come on uh, but the lesser lights than Nell O'Donnell and, and Langan just really stood up and got points, kept Donegal ticking over and you always felt for as long as Donegal were in the game you still knew that they probably would be the bigger, more experienced team come the final minutes and so it proved And just speaking of that matchup between McBrady and McKay, that was something else, I was watching that off the ball a lot you know, he was in his face, he, he wasn't looking at the ball, he didn't care where the ball was, you know he was just looking at Paddy and Chris McKeague is known to be one of the best man markers in the, in the game and he absolutely done a job on Paddy McBrady today and you could see Paddy McBrady was increasingly cutting a more and more frustrated figure uh, Chris McKeague got booked but that didn't didn't really loosen the, the stranglehold that he had on McBrady at all there was one stage McBrady got on the ball which was probably his only touch and play mm. for the first 20 minutes of the second half and he just forced he tried to just get a bit of space and he just forced a shot out of more frustration and I noted it down it was just out of frustration and it got half blocked down and again he got the wee tap in the head saying this is not your day mate uh, but again he was the one who got the free that put Donegal initially mm-hmm. in the head, in, in the lead coming into the end and he was a wee bit nervy he looked a wee bit nervy to me striking it uh, but again it just uh, points all the more to the quality of the man that he came up with that winner right at the death something that Michael Murphy has done when Michael Murphy is then man marking jobs has came up at the end with big scores well McBrady done it today yeah, I was actually looking at Declan Bonner there at one point when he got half blocked that time. You know, he took out his notepad, looking like he was gonna, you know, substitute him, and then he turned around and he just gave him like a bit of confidence, said, "Keep going, keep going." And my God, thank God he didn't take him off. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose Bonner knows like that game was looking all the way that it was just going to go closer and closer as, as it came towards the end and so it proved and at that stage you could even see Derry whenever Derry had that long period of possession at the end after Donegal were in the lead and they were searching for the equaliser you're looking your shooters on the ball you're not looking your players that might take a shot if things are going well you're looking your high high percentage your highest quality players your clutch shot players to come onto the ball McBrady is one of those for Donegal and so it proved and Derry were really impressive, you know, they've had quite a year, you know, it's, it's sad to see them get knocked out like this, obviously it's a knockout championship this year, but they're back better than ever. Yeah, and what was really interesting about the Derry performance today, they, they shot the lights out in Division 3 and everybody was saying that Gallagher has, has shared this defensive uh, man image or this defensive manager image, but it was testament today to the way that it is in the modern game, you have to play it both ways you have to depend on the opponent that you're coming up against in the setting of the game you have to be able to play defensive football and they did that today they were very very compact defensively lots of men running back as soon as they lost the ball they were all getting back Uh, and that was obviously a style of play Gallagher became known as but they also showed in their division three campaign what they can be like when they're in the front foot and really pushing up Uh, and they've got huge attacking ability so for Derry today will really really hurt because they'll feel it was a game that they left behind and a famous mm-hmm. win that they, they've left behind today but they'll know in the heart of hearts that they're very close now to that very top rank of, of teams in the country uh, and they'll be looking ahead to Division 2 campaign and to further progress I think when, when the dust settles they'll, they'll be pretty happy with, with their year's work
And Enda, one of the things we've seen here today was that Rory, he's very animated on the sideline. Yeah, it's it's almost difficult at times to, to concentrate on the match whenever he's just incessantly calling. And I even notice sometimes like he's just instructing the players continually where to stand, always, always focusing on the poor players that play this side of the pitch. You just really get it in the ear the whole time. And in fact, some of them actually turned around and told them to keep quiet. But certainly that's his management style. Like it, He's very, very loud. And with the empty, the relatively empty stands, he, he really stands out. And it's quite distracting. Even Declan Bonner, like I can imagine it, uh, mm-hmm. was quite grating for him. And they have to really work hard to stay focused on their game. But Donegal done that today. I suppose Donegal players would have been used to that as well. Uh, and they done that. But like... Rory Gallagher, it works for, for Derry because the, the M boys play it outstanding today for, for me anyway and, and his energy that he brings on the sideline is massive for them uh, but Donegal have to concentrate on their own game and sometimes that's difficult when you have such an animated man in the opposition dugout. Absolutely and we've seen Michael Murphy coming on here in the second half today, what an impact he made, you know, he didn't do a hell of a lot but even the little things that he did do just really got them to where they needed to be, he got those two points and you know set them up rightly. Yeah, it was absolutely massive. I think it was excellent management by Declan Bonner, in fairness, because coming back from a hamstring injury, it's all about trying to manage the load of, of, of the hamstring. And with that there, the the 80 minutes of what is a senior in the county game would be too much in the hamstring. And so he was always going to have to come off. And if he was coming off after, say, 50 minutes, the game was likely to be in the melting pot at that stage. And instead, he had him to go on for the final 20 minutes. So... From that point of view, Donegal, it worked. Their, their plan worked perfectly. They were sailing it close to the wind because they really, really missed him in the first half and, until he entered the fray. Uh, I think he improved them significantly and all our boys seemed to grow in confidence when, when he was there. And he also drew a lot of dairy attention to him, which mm-hmm. created more pockets in that otherwise very, very watertight dairy defence. Uh, so that worked really well. From Donegal, that's a win-win. He's now had 20 minutes of football into the hamstring, which is great. That loads it up a wee bit. He was also, we've seen him doing the runs here at the end with the other subs, the other Donegal subs at the end. So that gets another bit of time in the leg. He'll have a week now more of training to keep working that and building up. But I'd imagine they'll still have a similar sort of temptation to maybe use him in, a, in that same manner against Tyrone. But that'll be a will they or won't they scenario for this week that everybody will worry lots about in the Donegal management. I'd say fairly early on they'll know what they're doing and let everybody else worry and be distracted by that. And a big semi-final battle is coming up then against Tyrone. We've seen the management sitting up here today, not sitting too far from us. No, I've seen, I seen the management team, there was Brian and, and Fergal and Collie Holmes, the trainer, and of course the, the erstwhile Mickey Moyna was there too, the kit man stroke manager, I think he's going <laughs> into now as well. But they were they were sitting over from us, and look, it's a lovely place for them to be, having won, they had a good win yesterday, uh, but they'll know this this is another big, big step up, Donegal or Derry. Donegal it is, Throne and Donegal have had major battles over the past several years, they've really been the two top teams in Ulster now for quite some time, I would say both teams probably aren't quite at their peak at the minute, mm-hmm. uh, so both teams will be knowing that they need to be playing at the top of the game, but will also see opportunity and a less solid uh, opponent than maybe what they've come up against in the past, like for Throne, they'll see greater defensive frailty there in Donegal than, than what they would have recognised over the past several years like Derry really were in for 3-4 maybe good goal chances and a lot of Derry scores came from e- relatively easy shooting positions which Donegal were letting away which isn't the Donegal of old uh, so Tyrone will know there's greater opportunities there uh, but Donegal again will know that they have maybe another level or two in them uh, going like today's was a fairly disjointed performance so they'll know there's more in them and they'll also know that Tyrone aren't aren't exactly a polished team as yet either. And were you impressed with Tyrone yesterday? Hey, I was actually, I suppose, coming off a, a relatively disjointed league campaign. Uh, Tyrone didn't have much time in the legs at all. They, they stuck rigidly to lockdown, which I would have to say from, from hearing in the grapevine and everything else, not many teams did. Uh, and so they, they, they stuck rigidly to lockdown. Only four weeks of training. I think their rustiness showed when they were back on the pitch that they weren't quite at the peak of their game. The last four weeks has really helped them. I was impressed with their physicality yesterday. They tried out a new midfield pairing. They ended up with Brian Kennedy and Con Kilpatrick. And that looked really, really good. Physically imposing, which Strone haven't been in a long time in the middle. That looked really good defensively. I thought they were massive. A lot will hinge on Ronan McNamee, his suspension. Mm-hmm. And, uh, as far as I know, they're, they're, they're going to appeal it. Uh, if they can get that off that'll really strengthen their hand him and Patrick Hampshire I thought were massive yesterday in what was a very very good Throne defensive effort Throne's concern is up front they were reliant on Darren McCurry yesterday the the, the 
caveat to that is of course they welcomed Cahill McShane back in so for Throne there was plenty of positives yesterday and, and they needed them Kerry, Kerry really hurt that team the, the performance there in Killarney really hurt that team but they'll have delighted to get up and running yesterday but it sets it up for a brilliant tie next week Absolutely and I spoke to Rory there after the game and he was disappointed uh, but he just said look I wish there was more games for you as your first year as manager as well do you wish there was more games? Look, uh, after I got beaten in the championship, to be honest, the, the stomach beats knocked out of you and you sort of be happy enough. But in terms of team development, it, it's really frustrating because you, you could sense it was good development. The lads had put in so much work and, and for it to be ended so soon, you, you'd love to have another couple of months and you would know the, the further work that you could do, the, the further development work that you could do for, I suppose, teams at all level and particularly at, uh, at our level with Antrim. Another couple of months would have been absolutely priceless and would enhance the level and the conditioning and everything around that squad and even just the buy-in and the, 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 the togetherness of the camp which you, can't, you, you cannot buy and having only three, four months together uh, is difficult to really build that proper bond which you need given the amount of work and, and the level that you're supposed to be playing at. And for you, can I ask you what's more stressful being on the sideline here as an inter-county manager or being on the pitch? <laughs> Uh, management absolutely and it's one of the big learning points like I went through my career and you're always wrapped up as a player you'd be very wrapped up very insular thinking of your own game nervous as hell about your own game and hoping that you don't that, hoping that you can produce the goods on any given day I never once looked at Mickey Hart on match day morning or coming into a match or in the Croke Park dressing room and thought you know, a lot of pressure on him today I'm, I'm sure he's nervous I never, it never crossed my mind at all I would have presumed the manager would what have they got to be nervous about so certainly it's been a learning curve from that end uh, but look for both players and management these are these are big days they put in a huge amount of effort both players and managers and there's a lot on the line but I suppose players they're in the lucky position they can actually physically do something about it and I would always maintain it is always about the players a lot of the attention is on the managers and I suppose that's uncomfortable because bottom line you're not in a huge amount of control on match day itself that's still the privilege of the players so if, if, if you're given a choice it's get the boots on and get playing and keep playing for as long as you can Brilliant Enda, thank you No problem